Why are INFJs viewed as being passive-aggressive? Today, we're going to dive into a question that many people wonder about. Why are INFJs sometimes viewed as passive-aggressive? For those who have an INFJ personality, this might feel frustrating, especially if they feel misunderstood or judged. And for those who interact with INFJs, understanding why they might come across this way can bring clarity to your relationship with them. We'll go over the reasons behind this perception, explore how INFJs communicate, and discuss some examples of passive-aggressive behaviors that might show up. If you're ready to dive into the psychology behind this, stay tuned. What is passive-aggressive behavior, and why it's sometimes associated with INFJs? Passive aggressiveness is a form of indirect expression of negative feelings or resentment. Instead of openly communicating frustration or anger, a person might use subtle actions, body language, or tone to convey their displeasure without saying it outright. This can include behaviors like giving the silent treatment, making sarcastic remarks, or using subtle, underhanded comments to express unhappiness. Why passive aggressiveness happens? People may act passive-aggressively for various reasons, but it often stems from discomfort with direct confrontation. Some people may fear conflict, while others might not feel confident expressing their true feelings directly. And sometimes, people might not even be aware that they're behaving this way. People with the INFJ personality type are known for being empathetic, thoughtful, and often reserved. While they're deeply caring, they're also more likely to avoid direct conflict, especially if they fear it could harm relationships or disrupt harmony. Their communication style can sometimes lean towards subtlety and indirectness, which may appear passive-aggressive to others. The INFJ personality is one of the rarest personality types known for their deep empathy and intuition. They're constantly tuning into others' emotions and are usually conflict-diverse, prioritizing harmony in their relationships. Here is how their need for harmony can lead to misunderstandings. Conflict avoidant nature. One key trait of INFJs is their tendency to avoid conflict. For an INFJ, harmony is incredibly important. They often go out of their way to keep the peace, even if it means not expressing their true feelings directly. Let's say an INFJ has a friend who is always late. Instead of saying, I feel disrespected when you're late, the INFJ might instead make a casual comment like, I guess some people don't value time as much, or just give a quiet, slightly frustrated smile when their friend finally arrives. Sensitivity to others' feelings INFJs are highly sensitive to the emotional states of others and are usually careful not to hurt anyone's feelings. Because of this, they often struggle with openly expressing negative emotions. They might worry that if they express their frustrations directly, it could damage the relationship. Imagine an INFJ feels neglected by their partner. Rather than openly discussing this, they might withdraw emotionally, hoping their partner will notice their distance and ask what's wrong. This can come off as passive-aggressive, as the INFJ doesn't directly address the issue but hopes their partner will pick up on their cues. Now that we have a better understanding of why INFJs might lean towards passive-aggressive communication, let's look at some specific examples of passive-aggressive behaviors that can be common among INFJs. Keep in mind, these behaviors aren't exclusive to INFJs, but the INFJ's unique personality traits can make these tendencies more likely. The silent treatment or withdrawal. When INFJs feel hurt, they may withdraw instead of directly addressing their feelings. They might retreat to their own space, become less responsive, or give short answers, hoping the other person will notice something is off. An INFJ coworker feels frustrated that they're doing more work than others on a project. Instead of addressing it, they might become quiet in team meetings or stop volunteering for extra tasks, hoping others will recognize the imbalance without them having to point it out. Sarcasm and indirect comments. While INFJs are usually kind-hearted and sensitive, they may resort to sarcasm or subtle comments to express frustration indirectly. This often happens when they feel overwhelmed or unappreciated. If a friend constantly interrupts the INFJ, 
they might say something like, Oh, no, please keep talking. I'll just wait my turn. The INFJ might hope the friend picks up on the hint, but the indirectness can come across as passive-aggressive. Doing things out of obligation but with resentment. Sometimes, INFJs will agree to things they don't want to do in order to avoid conflict. However, if this builds up, they may start showing subtle signs of resentment in their body language or tone of voice. An INFJ agrees to help a friend move even though they're exhausted. They might go through with it but sigh heavily or give off a slightly annoyed vibe, unintentionally expressing that they didn't want to be there. Here is why INFJs might avoid direct confrontation and how this may play into the perception of passive aggressiveness. Fear of hurting others. INFJs often prioritize others' feelings over their own. This strong empathy can make them hesitant to say something that might hurt or offend others, leading them to express themselves indirectly instead. Imagine an INFJ who's frustrated with a friend's behavior. Instead of telling the friend directly, they might try dropping hints or subtly changing the topic, hoping the friend will pick up on it without them having to be blunt. Internal processing. INFJs tend to process emotions internally, using their intuition to reflect on situations before reacting. This means they often need time to work through their feelings, which can come off as indirect or even avoidant. After an argument, an INFJ might need hours or even days to think about what was said before they're ready to talk. During this time, they might seem passive-aggressive or withdrawn, when in reality, they're just processing. Conflict is draining. Conflict can be mentally and emotionally exhausting for INFJs. When they do engage in a conflict, it often takes a lot out of them, leading to a tendency to avoid it whenever possible. If an INFJ roommate has an issue with how chores are divided, they might let it go repeatedly, feeling that bringing it up would just create tension. Over time, though, they might start acting in subtly resentful ways. If you're an INFJ who has been called passive-aggressive or if you recognize some of these behaviors in yourself, there are ways to address and overcome these tendencies. Practice direct communication. INFJs can benefit from practicing direct communication, especially with people they trust. This can help them become more comfortable expressing their needs and frustrations openly. Instead of hinting that they're upset, an INFJ can practice saying, I felt hurt when you cancelled our plans last minute. I value our time together, so it was disappointing. Simple, direct statements like this help avoid confusion. Set boundaries and learn to say no. INFJs often struggle with saying no, which can lead to resentment. Learning to set boundaries and expressing their needs openly can help reduce passive-aggressive behavior. An INFJ might practice saying, I'm really busy this weekend, so I won't be able to help you with your move. This might feel uncomfortable at first, but setting clear boundaries prevents hidden resentment from building up. Use I statements to express feelings. Using I statements, such as I feel or I need, can help INFJs communicate their feelings without sounding accusatory. Instead of saying, you always interrupt me, they could say, I feel like I don't get to finish my thoughts when I'm interrupted, and it's frustrating for me. This is a more constructive way to address issues. Journaling to process emotions. Writing down their thoughts and feelings can be helpful for INFJs to understand what they're feeling and why. This reflection can make it easier to address issues directly later on. An INFJ might journal about a difficult situation with a friend, helping them clarify why they felt hurt and what they want to communicate. If you're someone who has an INFJ in your life, here are ways you can help them feel more comfortable with open communication reducing the likelihood of passive aggressiveness. Encourage open dialogue. Let the INFJ know that you value their perspective and encourage them to share their thoughts. Make it clear that you won't judge or get defensive. You could say, I know you might hesitate to share your feelings, but I really value honesty between us. This creates a safe space for them to open up. Notice their non-verbal cues. Sometimes, INFJs communicate more through body language or tone. 
Noticing these subtle cues and checking in can help them feel understood. If an INFJ seems distant, ask gently, Hey, is something bothering you? I want to understand if there's anything on your mind. This approach shows empathy and concern. Be patient and understanding. INFJs take time to process their feelings. Giving them the space they need can help them feel more comfortable and less likely to communicate in passive-aggressive ways. While INFJs may sometimes come across as passive-aggressive, this behavior often stems from their desire to maintain harmony and avoid conflict. By understanding these tendencies and making an effort to communicate openly, INFJs and those around them can improve their relationships and reduce misunderstandings. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And let us know in the comments, have you experienced passive-aggressive tendencies in yourself or others? How do you address them?